Help us tonight, O oh God, change our lives even by the power of your spirit. Let no one return the way we came in the name of Jesus. And whilst the word of God comes forth, let there be healings, let there be deliverances, let there be supernatural manifestations of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. hallelujah welcome to the house of God this is koinonia it is not just the name of a ministry it captures everything that we represent this is the house of God the place of bread the place of power the place of wisdom the place of his presence And I pray that God will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, let me start on this note tonight. Koinonia, please listen carefully. Koinonia is a global vision. This is not just the invention and idea of a man who seeks to do something with his life. If, if that is your understanding, you will miss a lot of things. This is not only an apostolic and a prophetic vision, but it is a global vision. It is global in scope. This is the reason why God does all the things that he does around the world. Why am I saying this? Because you see, listen carefully. In every church, in every ministry, and in every vision, there are three kinds of people and this is also for a global family please listen carefully in every vision there are three kinds of people number one the first category of people you have and will find in every vision are those I may refer to as general participants this includes well-wishers this includes those who may want to call themselves fans and just those who have and communicate goodwill towards the man of God and towards the vision. There is no commitment whatsoever, but they like the idea that is being proposed by that ministry or that vision. And if and when situation provides the opportunity, they do not mind receiving from that vision there is no commitment whatsoever they like the idea they celebrate from afar what god is doing and they wish the vision and the visionaire well in every church in every organization you have this group of people globally speaking number two the second category of people are those who are connected by covenant revelation they are connected by covenant revelation they include members and all those who are domiciled say within that territory there is a deeper level of commitment from this group of people um, they are very intentional about receiving they are intentional about seeing to it that they do not miss out on anything that God is doing are we together now every time these sets of people come they are coming for a meeting organized by a man of God and organized by a ministry they are coming to be blessed but they do not really see themselves as part of the vision necessarily they just know that they are principal beneficiaries of that vision they are connected 
but they are largely connected only to receive the scope of their connection and the scope of their their participation is purely based on the fact that there is something to receive and there is nothing wrong with that it's a solution center and that's why god brings people the final category of people you find uh, not necessarily few but this usually would be the smallest of the group are those who are called pillars they are pillars behind the vision behind the man of god their participation is not just to receive when you mention the name of the ministry they will answer because for them they are not coming to church for them they are not coming to hear from a man of god they believe that they are active participants of that vision so when you say koinonia they will answer you they won't say apostle will answer uh -uh. they believe for instance that this is a vision god has planted them in the house of god and they are committed not only to receive but to make everything possible for that vision to stand for that vision to thrive for that vision to remain are we together now this is very important my my assignment and my proposition for bringing this is to encourage us to move past the realm of just being general participants there listen the value that you derive from your life will not just depend believe me when i tell you that it will not just depend on the job that you do as important as that is it will not just depend on all of the personal plans that you have the relevance and even the fulfillment to your life will be derived principally from the degree to which your life participated actively in kingdom come nothing else will give you the kind of satisfaction that participating in this kingdom come project provides not money not fame not promotion not education these things are right but none of them sustains the power to give you the fulfillment that come in knowing that you are actively part you are a pillar in what god is doing that means that you came to church tonight and you are happy because you didn't come alone so when they say god is blessing people in koinonia you rejoice because you know that you have become a pillar you are part of the instruments that god used to make that speaking true are we together yes generally as a person i don't commit myself in anything that will not provide me an opportunity to play an active role serving not necessarily leading but serving that's why you don't find me in many groups and associations now i don't i don't commit myself to anything from afar it is either i am not there or if and when i am there i am there with all my heart not just intending to receive but intending to be part of the reason why it works you can imagine that when we get to heaven and we're talking about the redemption story there are those who will sit down and listen but there are those who will stand to say i know i carried the cross i tasted of that pain i know because i brought a towel to clean the body when i saw the resurrected christ my prayer for you is that somewhere in the journey of your life you will find something and you will find somewhere that is worth giving your heart and your all there are many of us here this is not my message it's just a charge you are involved in so many things in your life but you are not committed in anything are we together you are in this club you are in this group you are in this association everywhere little but you don't give any full commitment to anything part of you is in your family part of you is in ministry part of you is with god part of you is with satan part of you is with men 
part of you is with culture part of you is with several things this is a call it is better to be doggedly committed in a wrong thing it will be easy for god to rescue you you see it was very easy for god to save sinners because they were headlong they were completely anti-christ there was no standing in the line and so it was easy are we together the one who was completely blind said thou son of david have mercy on me he was blind he knew he was blind and he knew when the eye opened but those who had eyes and could not see they kept roaming around the crusades and never got blessed hallelujah so let me challenge you you must begin to integrate your mind into this vision that every time you come don't come as a fan fans don't receive anything don't come as a well-wisher well-wishers have no inheritance are we together now inheritance is for those who are in the family connected indeed by revelation from god this even becomes the basis of your conviction there are many people who hang around the house of God and the things of God and they are unable to receive maximally. You know why? Because they are not connected sincerely. When you read Psalm 133, please give it to us. Let me end this, this charge by reading Psalm 133 from verse 1. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head, that's where it starts from, that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed, the priest now, and went down to his skirts, to the skirts of his garment. Verse 3, it says, as the dew of Hammon, and as the dew that descended upon Mount Zion, for there, not in that place, in that state it is not the place in that state that state of connectivity that anything that runs from the head the hand starts rejoicing because it is going to reach it are we together now yes when you stand to take a shower the part that is directly facing it or closely in touch with it is your head but the remaining part of your body rejoices because as it flows from the head literally every part of your body when the shower starts coming there are parts that may not be touched for a while but let them remain there eventually is that true there is nothing that happens to the head that will not happen to the remaining part including under your feet so this is the secret behind receiving that when you come and you open up your heart sincerely primarily unto Jesus but in honor to the structures that he has put I'm telling you there is no limit to what God can do in your life the church of God is not a place where people come to show titles I am this I am that the church of God is not where people come to show experience the church of God is not even where people come to bully people psychologically and spiritually with revelation and anointing. The church of God is a serious place where God makes men, where God builds men, where God trains men, where God releases people with power and fire. And we must have this at the back of our minds so that we come to receive. Listen, when you are connected and you are not you go beyond the realm of a fan beyond the realm of a well-wisher even beyond a realm of somebody who just wants to carelessly receive it will tell on your attitude as far as the ministry of the word and the spirit is concerned are we together so when you come to the house of God you give your attention you give your time you lend your destiny that undivided attention. Why? Because God is about to speak. He speaks through men. But believe me, he's the one speaking. You are listening for your word. 
you are listening for the move of the spirit you are listening for wisdom coming to you you are listening for impartation at the end of it by the time you are sharing the grace you live happy knowing that your time invested in his presence was so worth it did you know you can sit down and at the end of the service it is possible that with all the mighty things that God you know would do through a service the entire span of a service you can leave and not be able to define exactly what you got it is terrible Jacob already taught us that lesson he said the Lord was in this place and I knew not so let me speak to our global family whether you are connected from Europe from America from Asia Africa you have to realize that it is not until we bring a branch of koinonia to your region it is not until we hold a conference in your region that is profitable and all these are already in the blueprint but let me tell you this your connection is from the heart that you can be watching all the way from Australia all the way from China and you are seated in your room seated watching by way of television and you know that this is Jesus speaking this is my family we may be we may be far apart as far as regions and all of that is concerned but the vision has brought us together one global vision you are in Australia and yet you are connected sincerely that means everything that concerns the vision concerns you if we are praying you pray if we are fasting you fast are we together if we are lifting up our hands here you lift up your hands in your home there to receive you don't say oh I'm just watching by way of internet the man of God is saying say this after me or open your mouth and pray and then you're trying to enjoy dinner while you are that's that may not be wrong but you don't receive that way are we together believe me when I tell you I listen to this some of these messages myself and when I'm listening to them in most cases to be fair and honest I sit down and I give it my undivided attention and when the prayers I'm the one leading the prayers here yet when I'm listening to it I pray sincerely God be my witness the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and believers must be cultured to understand the modus operandi of the house of God and then how to receive from God coming to the presence of God is wonderful but it is not enough your attitude determines to a very large extent the degree to which the Spirit of God reaches and blesses you would you want to pray in one minute all over the globe connecting and those who are here I'd like you to pray and say Lord grant me the grace to be connected in truth and to be connected indeed by revelation I assure you that nobody comes to the house of God like this just by desire it is prophetic is a call from the realm of the spirit they that be planted in the house of God it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God that even in old age they will be fat and flourishing go ahead and pray talk to the Lord I obtain grace to not be casual with your presence you have planted me by your spirit I submit to your wisdom to change me I submit to your wisdom to build me I submit to your wisdom to make me I submit to your wisdom to raise me I submit to your wisdom to heal me I submit to your power In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ this is very important so that the next time you are inviting a brother a sister a friend when you invite them they will watch the attitude of your commitment your loyalty to God the seriousness your intention and that in itself becomes a message for them because there are many people when they are invited 
to a church they just play around and laugh around enjoy cry where they need to cry and get completely distracted but when they see you who brought them as one who has been part of this family without talking to them they will learn how to respond in the presence of God are we together that time for the word is not the time to play around with your phone playing computer games or responding to emails except if and when necessary but that most of the time if not all of the time your attention should be completely focused on the word believe me one word from god accurately communicated and received by a heart that is full of faith can change your life are we blessed so thank you so much for your attention i owe you a, a, a responsibility on that god to help you maximize your time and we have a vow and a covenant with god that on no occasion would you ever come here and end up returning back that your time was totally wasted by the grace of god we are men but let me tell you we are serious people with god you can have that at the back of your heart praise the name of the lord hallelujah let's go to the word discerning the will of god this is a very powerful message tonight please let your heart be opened it is a very deep message that is going to help and strengthen the spiritual lives of many many people discerning the will of god I want you to be very sensitive because for many of you in addition to all you have learned that which you are going to be learning tonight will bring perspective to your Christian experience you are about to know God in a new way tonight God will be reintroduced there are many you will make sense of many happenings in your life by reason of what you are learning if you are ready for this pray in one minute lord may i not miss out on what you are saying open my eyes open my ears to hear go ahead and pray discerning the will of god hallelujah amen discerning the will of God Ephesians chapter 5 let's start from verse 15 Ephesians 5 and verse 15 so see then that ye walk circumspectly the word circumspectly means accurately not as fools but as wise next verse it says redeeming the time the word redeem means to buy buy back time because the days are evil 17 it says wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is that not understanding what the will of god is is foolishness it is lack of wisdom when an individual finds himself herself in a state where you are unable to understand and walk in the will of God for your life the Bible says that is not a wise way to live are we together there are several people in, in fact to, to be honest with you God has been dealing with me on many things and one of it is he's been putting a burden in my heart like never before to really help the body of Christ come out of a life of powerlessness and lack of results a life of powerlessness an absence of genuine consistent ever increasing results I am a firm believer in results results validate that God is at work in the midst of his people results bring glory to the name of the lord results i've taught you here get my message commanding salvation over territories 
I've taught you here that results are also evangelists that they can preach to a territory the same way a human being is an evangelist that resolves the outworkings of the power of God in the life of an individual is able to preach and send a message across territories it takes understanding to cure the powerlessness of the church the average believer is still in confusion and even frustration as to why we do not see certain levels of commitment from God and by God over our lives it seems as though there are a few people who have secured the commitment of God in their lives it seems as though there are a few organizations ministries individuals men and women of God who seem to have commanded the attention of heaven in an unusual way power trails their life that everywhere they move the power of God seems to move there why is that so Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 let me start from there the Bible says and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries popular scripture but the people that do know their God everybody say their God shall be number one strong strength capacity and number two they shall do exploits not just talk exploits not just hope and wish for exploits the people that do know their God he never said the people that do know God do know their God that means it has to do with a personal revelation he has to be your God the people that do know their God not their neighbor's God not their man of God's God as wonderful as that is he must become your God a personal revelation and a personal encounter the Bible leaves you with a promise that if you do press to know God as your God number one that you shall be strong capacity strength stamina empowerment number two he says you will do exploits your life will never be average your life will never be small that you will become such a useful tool in the hands of God he will do much with your life are we together praise the name of the Lord so the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits now please look up there are two things about God you need to know the Bible says we should know God but the desire to know God alone does not make you know him you have to understand the aspects of God that you should know please pay very close attention there are two principal dimensions of God or information about God you must know number one is his nature the first thing you need to know about God according to this scripture is his nature if you do not know the nature of God the devil will deceive you and cheat you on many fronts and on many grounds for instance the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate that he is slow to anger and he is rich in love that awareness about the nature of God will help you in relating with God without fear that even though he's a warrior even though he's a lion even though he's a mighty God you have to realize that all of those supposedly fierce attributes are not just for you when it has to do with your relationship with God there are names you should know about God that he is father that he loves you that you are part of that family he is responsible over you say the nature of God you cannot excel in life without a thorough understanding of the nature of God if someone looks at me now for instance and says apostle God is angry with you and he said he will kill you or destroy you I will congratulate the person and allow him go home in peace and believe me I will go to my room and lie down and sleep I'm not going to wake up and panic and say ah, God do you know why 
there is something about the nature of God the nature of God that gives you security even with the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit there is something about the nature of God why are we not afraid of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilences the destruction that wastes in noonday there is something about God that we know you've heard me say it if God says right now that he's going to bless 10 people I will start praying for the remaining nine because I have found something about his nature I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness it's, it's not an empty boast there is something about the nature of God that if you do not know you will accept anything Satan and men bring to you about God are we together now this is one of the reasons why we learn Jesus through scripture because I have taught you here that among the many things that Jesus came to do in his earth work was that he came to correct our idea about God the prophets and all who gave types and shadows of the revelations of God in the Old Testament listen carefully they some of them revealed what they wrote as humans based on their limitations some of them it was the bias of their encounters and so they wrote all kinds of things when you study the Old Testament you will not like it in its entirety you may not like everything about God you find there because there are many many renditions that seem to suggest that God does certain things for instance you would hear the Bible say that a lying spirit came from the Lord you see and people have their perspectives and their opinions but now I told you until Jesus came everybody had a right to suspend his passion and his knowledge of God but when Jesus came he now said watch me as a correction now begin to correct that script all of the script that they wrote about God watch my life and anything you see me do anything you see me manifest go back to your understanding about God and search there and think if he says God is love don't believe him until you see me demonstrate love if you find me demonstrate love you can go back and say it is true that God is love so everything Jesus did not do in his earth work is not captured within the character of God are we together now yes the nature of God number two the second thing we need to know about God and that's that's where I'm what I'm dealing with tonight is the will of God the Bible says the people that do know their God and I'm breaking that knowledge of God that principally there are two things you need to know about God to excel number one is his nature number two his will if you understand the nature of God and you understand the will of God then indeed you are fortified with power capacity and you are ready for exploits hallelujah now write this down please you command power in this kingdom you command power in this kingdom to the degree to which you understand and walk in the will of God you command power in this kingdom to the degree to which you understand and walk in the will of God the administration of the power of God is not haphazard just because you are a Christian does not mean you will see the power of God at work in your life just because the Bible says it uh -uh. the administration of the power of God and the authority of the kingdom is defined within the circumference of his will that means outside of the will of God there is no guarantee for the power of God to work for you are, are you are you understanding now this is very important so when you see certain people in the body of Christ and when you see certain people in the kingdom look fearfully powerful powerful in deeds powerful in results powerful in words it is not that they are intrinsically powerful 
it is because the power that they derived is because they have been able to find the will of God and they have pegged themselves at the center of his will for them this is very important Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12 Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12 it says Epaphras who is one of you a servant of Christ saluted you always laboring fervently for you in prayer what is the content of his prayer that ye may stand perfect and complete or entire in all the will of God someone please shout it say all the will of God not some he's praying Epaphras is praying and he's saying that he's praying for you laboring fervently in prayer that you will have access to all the will of God because your victory your relevance your security is found in his will no wonder many believers continue to live defeated lives because they do not understand the concept of the will of God nor have they placed value on what can happen to a life when you are at the center of his will let me tell you this up front in this kingdom your immunity is in the will of God your relevance is in the will of God your longevity is in the will of God if Satan really wants to attack you let me tell you how Satan attacks classically I have taught you this he finds a way of drifting you away outside of the will of God the moment Satan brings you out of the will of God he does not need to fight you again your disalignment becomes a weapon against you is someone learning now this is very powerful Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36 Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36 10 36 for ye have need of patience he says that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise when do you receive the promise not before the promise that you receive is connected to your understanding and doing the will of God this is very powerful you have to understand this Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20 please very quickly Hebrews 13 and verse 20 it says now hallelujah now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant uh-huh make you perfect in every good work why to do his will stop there look at this scripture very carefully do you know what he's saying that on account of your determination to do the will of God that God will provide everything every machinery it takes provided it is his will you are going to do God will move heaven and move everywhere to make sure that the, um, the atmosphere is conducive no wonder in his will supply comes no wonder in his will help comes if you are in his will even a raven will be used to feed you if you are in his will even a fish will bring coin out of the water the most important thing is that you are in his will make you perfect the word there is entire in every good work to do his will God's commitment to you is to the degree to which you are prepared to understand and to do his will this is very very important let's look at the life of Jesus our pattern man a wonderful worship team sang so powerfully about Jesus in John chapter 4 and verse 34 Jesus now John chapter 4 and verse 34 here's what Jesus said Jesus said unto them 
my meat what does that mean my satisfaction meat was an ancient way of saying food food was usually said meat so my my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish whose work my satisfaction my relevance is to do the will of him that sent me in other words jesus was saying i didn't come to the earth with any personal agenda i came as an executor of the will of god and my assignment my focus my drive my passion is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it in matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 popular scripture jesus was teaching us how to pray and in verse 10 he says when you pray pray thus thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven jesus now after all of the salutations and the mindset that you must have in acknowledging god you know our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name then your kingdom come your will the next point in the prayer that Jesus was teaching them is that make sure your prayer becomes that the will of God finds expression in your life and across every territory. Are we still together? Jesus, our pattern man. Luke 22 and verse 42. This was how determined Jesus was to do the will of God. This was in Gethsemane. Jesus is in Gethsemane. In the midst of pain knowing that an exchange was going to happen in the realm of the spirit a painful one for that matter the Holy Spirit was going to leave him he was about to become the second Adam experientially and Jesus prayed three times one synoptic account will say saying father if it be thy will or if thou be willing remove this cup from off me he says nevertheless not my will but thine be done not my will but thine be done in fact in matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 from verse 49 and 50 matthew chapter 12 remember when they were asking jesus about his relatives what kind of a person are you don't you have relatives don't you have family members and Jesus looked at them and said watch my reply he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and here's what he said behold my mother and my brethren you know what they were asking him this one that your life is all about you are traveling is it that you don't have relatives don't you pay attention to family and he stretched and he pointed his hands back to verse 49 please his disciples and he said behold all men know but this is my mother and my brethren hmm. verse 50 whosoever whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven he says the same person by doing his will he has come into that close family that means my definition of family is not blood my definition of family is whoever is also with me in doing the will of my father are you are you seeing what jesus is saying now now i'm not saying family is wrong i hope you understand what i'm saying jesus is teaching us something here that his definition of being a brother or a sister is to the degree to which your heart is plunged in doing the will of god there are many people who shout around in church i'm jesus's junior brother jesus is my um, um, brother you know and all of that and that is right but you read what the Bible says as the condition. You want to be called brethren. You want to be called the brother and sister. He says, whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. This is very, very powerful. There are many, many people, unfortunately, who have found themselves, listen carefully. They have found themselves in terrains in life where it was inconsistent with the will of God many people drove themselves into various shades of disaster let me tell you this every time you are found in a place or doing a thing that has not been commanded by God 
Satan has legitimate access because I told you your fortification and your security is within the boundary of the will of God. Are we together? In the book of Genesis, when you read Genesis 1, 2, 3, the Bible says Satan continued to come through the serpent to Adam because Adam was at the epicenter of God's will. He was created and kept in Eden, the garden of God. Are we together now? Satan was coming to Adam and yet he could not touch Adam. Why? Because in the will of God was his fortification. Satan's assignment was to cause Adam to deviate out of the will of God. In fact, there are a class of spirits today that the Bible says their, 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 their crime was that they did not keep their original estate. They did not stay within the jurisdiction apportioned for them. In, even in our sociological, you know, sociology in our environment here a governor of a state say for instance the fct minister cannot go to nasarawa state or kaduna state and say i am a governor why because he's out of his jurisdiction is that true yes so the power to do whatever he wants to do is when he's within his jurisdiction please hear me the jurisdiction of authority for a believer the jurisdiction of power for a believer is the will of God the moment you are within the will of God let Satan back let him make noise let him say and do whatever it is it will not come near you but the moment you are outside of the will of God did the Bible not say the name of the Lord is like a you know a strong tower it says the righteous run into it and they are saved it didn't say they stand around it to be saved they run into it and they are saved discerning the will of God I'm going to give us four keys very quickly and then we'll pray four keys to discern the will of God but let's look at John 5 21 John 5 21 the Bible says for us the father John chapter 5 yes it says oh dear did I get that right Give us again John 5:21. I'm searching my notes here. For as the Father raised the dead and quickened them, no, no, no. I'm looking for something else. John 5:30. Please give me John 5:30. I can of my own self do nothing. He said, as I hear, thank you. Keep it there for us. As I hear, I judge. How does Jesus judge? Not as I want, not as I wish. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge and because my judgment is based on my hearing I can stand on it and say I know what I'm saying as I hear I judge not as I wish that experiment is too risky he said because I seek not my will but the will of the father that has sent me so God can send you to a place that does not seem to be favorable but because it is the will of God you can stand there speaking to principalities and powers and they will say Isaac leave that land and Isaac knows that God told him stay in this land and he will sow in that land and that same year you will receive and someone else can be in that same land and fail because he was not in the will of God it is risky and it is dangerous to be outside of the will of God Jesus, the son of the living God, is showing us here that the reason behind his exploits and his results was not just that he was Jesus, but that he made sure that every moment of his life, he would verify and verify that he was in the will of God. Your immunity is in the will of God. Your relevance is in the will of God. Let me give us four keys very quickly. Are you ready to receive there are four keys that will help any believer to discern and to walk in the will of God number one the first key to discerning and walking in the will of God 
is a life of total surrender a life of total surrender a life of total surrender give us John chapter 5 and verse 40 John 5 40 Did I miss something again? Luke chapter 22 and verse 42. Luke chapter 22 and verse 42, please. Yes. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup of me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Say surrender. God is not going to waste his time revealing his will to you until he knows that your heart is already prepared to accept what he brings there are many people who go to god in prayer and they are not going to god in prayer to really ask of the will of god they are going with their will already prepared and forcing him to stamp it are we together father i know you are going to bless me but i'm coming to you with the name of this senator lord give him no rest this is the man I have chosen. I must eat from this man. And God is saying, that's not how I work. Yours is to come to me. I have said you should come to me. It is, it is, it is for you to accept the blueprint that I've designed for your financial well-being. In this example, everybody says surrender. Yes, sir. It is all right to have your plans. It is all right to have your desires, the things that you want to do. But can I tell you, when you come to God, you must be willing. Your heart must be malleable to say, Lord, I am coming to you frail in understanding. I do not know so much about my destiny. I can only stand to depend on your wisdom. It is in your lights that I see light. Therefore, Lord, reveal your will. When he finds out that your heart is ready, believe me, his word will come. Is someone learning? There are some of you today, if God tells you his will, you will cast it, you will reject it, especially if it is against what you have already put. Lord Jesus, I'm coming to you. I sense in my spirit that it is UK or US. And God says, you'll be in Ogun for four years. And you say, <laughs> as a missionary sent, you will visit campuses, you will visit campgrounds. And you say, God, so I'm the one who is, is me that you see to do that assignment. Listen, more than your prayer and more than all of these things, the state of your heart, if your heart is genuinely surrendered, what is the basis of your confidence that God's will will not destroy you? Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29 11 is God helping someone for I know the thoughts that I think towards you say it who the Lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you an expected end in the thoughts of God for you there is an expected end hallelujah do you know why this is powerful because you see if you are not surrendered ask anybody who has mastered the art of working with god they will tell you the will of god will be in most times opposite to what you will want but it is in the foolishness of that dependence you will see the plan of god evolve in your life and when you look at the 10-year version of the obedience you you will turn back and say thank god i obeyed are we together let me tell you a few things about how god operates because we are largely in the flesh our desires and our expectations are usually drawn from our carnal state and so when the will of god comes the will of god is connected to his purpose and his eternal plan even for you it may not make sense in the short term but that is why it is god bringing it are we together there are men of god who will tell you they cried when god told them that they were called into ministry some of them god gave them instructions and they cried as if they were returning from funerals and with with tears from their eyes they began to sing songs of surrender and they started 10 years 
20 years 30 years and there are great people celebrating the name of the Lord across the nations and people look at them and say you are so lucky let me tell you this walking with God is a risk I repeat walking with God is a risk when God calls you the assignment is follow me follow me means trust me you cannot follow who you don't trust follow me means trust me I may not know where you are taking me oh God where are we going and he says follow me just be sure I'm before you if you are following something else don't say I'm the one you are following just be verify once you see me in front of you keep following how do you call a man Genesis 12 out of awe of the Chaldeans an idol worshiper and you tell him come out of your father's house come out of your kindred that is the entire span of his life and he says Go, follow me to a land that I will show you the land has no name follow me to a land that I will show you when God is revealing his will he will never tell you everything mm -mm. There must be a part of your followership that will, that will necessitate faith. To a land that I will show you. And the Bible says, Abraham began his journey. Abraham, where are you going? You are not young. Are you frustrated? Call a doctor. Because he has not had a child for a long time. Maybe it's some psychological issue and said no. And he continued going like a fugitive. The end of that obedience is that he earned a title, the father of nations, Abraham. The earth was willed to him. Do you know what it means to give you the earth? Can I tell you this, hear me? There are many of you, you will never step into the experience of that which you desire until your heart is willing to be surrendered. Many of us, your heart is still hardened it has to be my way god leave whatever you are doing and come here it must be my way ah. where would i be if you left me now where would i be if you left me now where would i be Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you must discern and understand the will of God. It does not make sense. I remember many years ago, we were preparing. In fact, I was even considering at that time moving to this same Abuja that we are now. Tired of Zaria was on my way. And I remember I woke up in the morning like every other day, happy, this is the Lord's day. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. And immediately the Lord called me for a retreat. And I went straight for a retreat. And that was when the Lord told me, that which I've told you, that koinonia, now is the time to start it. Lord, in Zaria, yes, sir. That from this place, the nations will come and meet you here. Where are the resources? How much do I have, oh God? In this place where they can burn you any day, they can come and ambush you. Yes, sir. That is a place. You see, let me tell you something. You can argue, you can cry, but obey. Because, ah, something is happening to someone here. God is ministering to someone already. You may cry, but obey. It may not make sense. It is a risk. A greater risk when you disobey. Listen very carefully to what I'm saying. I remember that time. After that retreat, I said, Lord, so this is it? How long will I be in Zaria? No answer. I've told you enough to start. In your obedience, I will meet you later and I will discuss. This is not the last time you will meet with me. And with the foolishness of obedience, the venue, where we we'll get the venue, because what I was seeing in my visions, I was seeing an overflow. I said, Lord, where will this thing come from? The auditorium that we were using, 
that, that we started using at that time it was small but what i saw in my vision was an expanded one i said no i didn't know they would later expand that place and so we took a step of faith lord if this thing fails let it fail at least let it fail in your hand i remember the first service my first sermon was ancient parts Is God speaking to someone? Surrender. Through crisis in Zaria, you would think after crisis, you would just pack up and say, God, I'm okay. I've tried. You too, you saw that I almost died. Mm -mm. Right there. And true to his word, from that place, that lowly estate, that he brought the nations right to that place. Remarkable manifestations of his power. And that would only be the beginning. After many years ah, you will learn a lot this night just be patient with me you will learn that the destiny speakings of God does not happen every day one of the things I'm going to be teaching you is discern the seasons of God speaking there are periods when the angel came and stirred the water it's not every time some of you is during your birthday some of you is during the end of the year you have to discern how God speaks to you very careless believers can be so careless when the season where there are there are seasons where his voice for your destiny always comes please sit down sit down sit down i remember i returned back from a meeting and i just placed my head to rest in my living room and i started seeing visions of abuja I said no no god this is what is this one again i had become so emotionally connected to zaria no matter where around the world i am i would not be satisfied till i return back home you would see me smiling as though they they put place a charm on me when i'm returning back home i had found so much satisfaction i was more than happy to build and settle and serve god and then the call came three years not just struggle in disobedience but verification if you ask me i probably would not say it's abuja that i will come to lord where will i go maybe just or somewhere or another nation somewhere but the lord brought, if you notice the the flyer that introduced koinonia to abuja you will see the map of the city it is because of the vision that i saw lord is this what you are doing i know your will let me tell you this if it is the will of god ba, he will go so far to make sure your confidence once your heart is ready to obey gideon kept asking questions okay make this wet and make this dry the angel did it make this dry and make he did it provided you are going to go and fight everybody says surrender what is surrender in this case the willingness to enthrone his will above your own the willingness to enthrone his will above yours as a proof that you trust him As a proof that you trust him look at me can I tell you sincerely some of you are in ministry some of you are in business generally everybody seeks to move to the next chapter the next chapter of your destiny will depend on your willingness not just to hear God but to submit to his will I will go I will go anywhere you lead me yeah. i will go i will go i will go anywhere you lead me i will go the will of god 
many of us here the lord brought you to this service tonight to finally break that hardness of heart why have you allowed your destiny to peg three years five years do you not know that when you try it is so sweet to trust in jesus you know that song it's worth just, just to rest upon, upon his promise just, just to know, know thus said the lord jesus jesus time oh for grace to trust God. hear me if anyone told you trusting God is easy tell them they lied they don't know anything you are not trusting God till you cry believe me if your tears don't join you in that trust it's not God that spoke to you there are things God will tell you that it will be like resetting your life again. It's like your entire life's labor is about to be thrown to the drain. Can I tell you? You may weep, but please don't stop till we look just like you. We may cry, but please don't stop till our lives look like you. God is leading mighty man in this place oh yeah he's directing man of power in this place he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him for someone god is telling you for as long as you cannot trust me you will keep seeing your breakthrough and yet never enter take the risk and say god if i perish i perish if i perish i perish if i perish i perish surrender shalabaranda skodibia at the other side of surrender is glory at the other side of surrender is power at the other side of surrender is grace surrender and throning his will above yours you've heard me say it if i hear god and he says shut down this ministry now sincerely i tell you by god this ministry will be short and people will call and say apostle you you are blessing me why would you do that provided it is god when your heart is surrendered by you are ready to do business with god in this kingdom you will command power you will command authority in this kingdom the will of god is only necessary to those and for those who are surrendered the willingness to obey i have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me i will go you're the shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead me i will go and i have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me i will go Go and read the stories of the generals you talk about 
John Lake that some of these people at the time they were joining the queue to enter the nations that they will evangelize they had no idea how will I eat how will I feed how will my children feed I just know he sent me and while they stand there they would tell you that as they stood there someone just came and said are you John Lake are you so 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 God asked me to stand and wait for you here you know why we don't hear these testimonies again in our world because we are too scientific give me guarantees I'm not teaching you to be foolish but believe me the risk factor of destiny as far as hearing God there is no civilization that will take it away go and read your Bible follow modern history people who left their place to another place foolishly because God said so and can I tell you you would think because you arrived at the place he sent you you may see the result immediately Ayah, if it's this God of heaven bar you will wait sometimes for a long time Lord I'm here now he says just wait there I, we will end up this discussion tonight where I will teach you the mystery of the silence of God sit down someone shall surrender. surrender you are not saying it to me you are saying it so that your spirit man will hear surrender <laughs> businessman only God knows how far you would have gone today if you learn to surrender I remember one time when this ministry started God gave an instruction it came by the voice of God to just empty the account and swear everything there was not much then but everything meant something knowing it was God with childlike obedience surrender number two let's hurry up are you learning number two how do I know the will of God? How do I discern the will of God? Number two, the word of God. The wisdom that comes from the word of God. This is very important. Having assumed a posture and a state of surrender where you are rather, ever ready to respond to his will, whether it is convenient for you or not, trusting him, his love and his power. Number two, the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 105. How do I know the will of God? How do I know the direction God is leading me? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path let's read together one to read thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path what does it mean to be a lamp unto your feet guidance what does it mean to be a light unto your path direction let me tell you the difference between guidance and direction if you were to come to this auditorium from say outside if I'm directing you, I'll say, okay, just come in, go left, and get, then you, you just get to the main auditorium or any of the overflows. That's direction. But guidance means I will tell you that when you get here, there is a step. Be careful. I have described the place for you, but have I told you there is a step? You can be headed the right direction and still fall because the terrain, you need light. The Word of God provides both guidance and direction is someone learning Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 there is a powerful quality in the Word of God that makes it a worthy tool for discerning the will of God it says for the Word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is the the word of God is the what the sanner of the thoughts and the intents of anybody's heart including God's heart the word of God is an instrument of discernment in ancient times they used tokens of discernment called the Urim and the Tumim they would use them it was given to them 
they would use it just like lots and they would find out the will of God they also used to cast lots but now the Bible says the word of God is the discerner the word of God can pierce into the heart of a man and fetch out what is hidden there this is powerful that means we can know what is in the heart of God by studying what is written in the word I have taught you to place value on this word let me lift it up so you see it this book you see has turned ordinary men to signs and wonders when Jesus walked upon the earth not even him ignored what was written the Bible says when he went to the temple they gave him the scroll of Isaiah is that in your Bible and the Bible says he, he stood up for to read in Luke chapter 4 and this was what he read the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he had sent me to heal or bind up the brokenhearted preach deliverance to the captives recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised uh-huh next verse to preach the acceptable year of the Lord 20 the Bible says and he closed the book so what was he holding the book not the novel not the magazine the book your destiny is hidden in the book the will of God is hidden in the book when you close the book you stop seeing the moment he closed the book he didn't say anything again provided the book was opening was opened he kept reading what was there the reason why you have not seen is because your book is closed the book given to you you there is a relationship between sight discernment and the opening of the book the Bible says he opened the book and he found where it was written concerning him that means like Christ there is something here written concerning everybody it is your assignment to take the Word of God and find where it is written concerning you are we together hallelujah found where it was written concerning him when you pay attention to the Word of God I have taught you the Word of God reveals the ways of God it reveals the principles of the kingdom listen carefully it now gives you the opportunity to be able to understand the character of God and that is able to filter all the 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 opinions that come around your life you can literally knowing the ways of God can help you know what God cannot say look up please knowing the ways of God can help you know what God cannot say that if you if you attempt to hear something that sounds like God you have a right to compare it with scripture and based on the character of God as revealed in the word you know that this is nonsense it's just my mind or it's a spirit do you know why the word of God is powerful because you're hearing I have a separate series on 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 hearing God and we're going to deal with that I'm for, tonight I'm just showing you the ways to walk in the will of God you will find out that your thoughts are powerful weapons as far as translating the voice and the speakings of God to your life your thoughts your thoughts are so powerful medical science tells us that a man can think his way to high blood pressure is that true literally nothing touched you but you were thinking until there were people who taught themselves till they died the Word of God why do we emphasize that believers stay with the Word of God so that they can understand the ways of God for instance if you hear something in your ears that you are called to a life of mediocrity you're not going to rise you will not go far that is the will of God for you clearly you know if you have been a student of scripture that you had the devil or you had the unrenewed part of your mind because according to this scripture that can discern the heart of men the Bible says the path of the just the first question is are you the just if you are not the just he's not talking to you but if you are the just you have a right to say based on this scripture I can judge this many of you have watched Papa Hagen Kenneth Hagen 
if you hear Kenneth Hagin manifesting the gifts of the spirit especially the gift of prophecy it's very interesting he would be praying in tongues and interpret it by himself and you hear him say no 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 this is not consistent with the counsel of God he would turn back and continue he's prophesying and by the spirit he's judging himself while he's speaking and he's not afraid to say uh -uh, this part of what he's saying is not God it may just be him he takes responsibility you go and watch his videos you would see him prophesying and you say no 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 this is not consistent with the counsel of God and he will continue speaking many of us have believed many things that is inconsistent with the way God talks inconsistent with the way God walks are we together can I be honest with you there are certain instructions that were given in the Old Testament that will never be given to anybody in Christ again so don't let the devil fool you and say just because you saw it in the Old Testament when Jesus came in the New Testament there is a big deal to his coming there were certain things that were done by the reason of his coming that will make certain things as far as the way that he operated with those people it can never happen again in the life of the believer you have to understand this the Word of God You need to know how to discern the will of God. Discern who to walk with. Discern who to listen to based on the word of God. Because when you read your Bible, you will see many instances where there was a mix of the power of God and divination. Is it in your Bible? Yes, sir. Go and read about Philip the evangelist and the encounter that they had. Go and read about, I think that should be Acts, Acts 16 or so. The lady with the spirit of divination everything she said was accurate if you are judging just based on results you will make a lot of mistakes in your life because there are many things satan will say that is true but it's not consistent with the word of god everybody say the word of god hear me let me tell you this in these end times we need we need a personal revelation of the word of god you must become a an intentional student of scripture if you want to survive the times that come very very important one of the principal ways that god speaks to us is through his word and if you do not have the word of god hidden in your heart you don't have the instrument to be able to discern the will of God. The devil will play with your mind until it destroys you. Are we together now? Yes. Number three. How do I discern the will of God? Through strategic prayers. Strategic prayers. Particularly praying in the spirit strategic prayers praying in the spirit here means praying in tongues this is one of the principal ways that the Bible provides as an instrument of discerning the will of God now hear me there are two levels of the will of God there is the will of God as far as the blueprint of your purpose and your destiny is concerned you will not hear God on that every day but there is the moment by moment dealings in your life that will lead you ultimately to that greater goal you need to hear the voice of God per day per moment you need to be in the will of God every time God will not be speaking to you about your destiny and your life every day but you need his will to know what he wants you to do part time per season prayer provides that platform to be able to buy into the mind of the spirit to know what God is thinking at the moment for you two scriptures first Corinthians chapter 2 very powerful scripture first Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 6 is God speaking to someone tonight 2 1 verse 6 be patient as I read ready look up please how be it we speak wisdom everybody say we speak wisdom he never said we speak tongues he called tongues wisdom he didn't say we speak tongues we speak wisdom 
among them that are mature or perfect he said yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught he says next verse we're reading to 16 but we speak the wisdom of god how in a mystery what we are speaking is not gibberish what we are speaking is not jargon paul is speaking by the spirit that when the believer begins to engage the prayer ministry that it is wisdom that you are speaking even though it is hidden in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world for our glory the hidden wisdom that when you begin to engage the prayer ministry with understanding even praying in the spirit you are accessing the hidden wisdom of god verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known this wisdom they would have spoken it too and discerned do you know what he's saying that if the princes of this world knew that praying this wisdom could give you access to divine secrets they would have used it too to know what this entire calvary thing was about and they would not have crucified the lord of glory that means if they prayed if all the, the princes of this world if they knew how to pray somebody would have picked the signal of the essence of redemption that paul got and they would say hey don't crucify jesus his death will be the salvation of the world this is what paul is saying that they were watching jesus go to the cross they didn't know there was a deeper meaning and he said there was a there was a provision in the economy of god for someone to understand what god was doing but that the princes of this world they were not privy to that which gives that access that means somebody can tap into you can you can look beyond the things happening in the earth and ascend to the realm of the spirit and watch what is really happening and playing out if you judge destiny by the physical things happening there are times listen there are times that everything can be all right yet there is turbulence in the realm of the spirit it has not manifested yet but by the time you begin to ascend in prayer you will touch a dimension in the realm of the spirit where you can see the truth of what is happening that there is trouble brewing in the spirit even though there seems to be peace on earth and you can take advantage of that knowledge and correct it before it manifests are we together so i can through the ministry of prayer I can pray and ascend to tap into the wisdom of God and I can see that God intends I mean that Satan intends that something negative will happen or God intends that this is ah my God listen do you know do you know do you know I can have a visitor who is coming to my house and not know why the person is coming but i can tap into the wisdom of god and find out and see that that person's coming is part of a bigger program to bless me that knowledge will now help me to know how to prepare and receive that person knowing that he's not an ordinary visitor many of us have ruined precious moments because we're interpreting things just from the earthly realm hear me if you were in Jerusalem in the days where Jesus was born you would just find out that on a certain day children started dying and you'll be wondering what is happening in this territory why are children dying like this two years and below what is happening that is killing children but only a few people knew what was happening that all that killing was the chase of somebody who had been born you would get up one morning and just see the stars so bright and say my god the earth is shining not knowing that something marvelous just happened may you never be in the dark again in the name of jesus christ may you never be in the dark again there are many of us prophetic calendars shift and yet you don't know God is walking and doing things and yet you cannot see. You can't discern what God is saying. Man of God is a risk in this season to not know the current emphasis of God. Just because you are waiting for others to see before you see through them.
strategic prayer. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. Hmm. Something is shifting in someone's life. And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. This is, he never said this is the only way. There are many ways, but he said to get the result you are looking for, this is the way, follow it. This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left, this is the way, walk ye in it. Why? Because of Jeremiah, I think Jeremiah now 33 and verse 3, call unto me and I will answer. The way will not just be revealed to you because you are sitting and crossing your leg. Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Many years ago, many years ago, when we had our first crusade, after that crusade, because we usually would organize a crusade in partnership with PFN, or at least some of the church body there, after the crusade, it was not a very, it was not really a big crusade, but at least Jesus was glorified. And afterwards, I remember some of the PFN leaders called me. They said, why don't you come and establish a branch of the ministry there? Would we'll give you some pastors, you can train them and have it. For most believers, that looked like breakthrough. Be careful when doors open. Even the prison has doors. So when a door is open, you better find out where you are entering. Nobody enters the prison except through a door. Every trouble has a door that leads to it. So just because the door is open, you can enter a door that will take prayer and the prophetic to open. Be careful. Our obsession for open doors without discernment will land us in trouble. For many of you, it's not closed doors that cause your trouble. It was open doors. Is God helping someone tonight? I went to God in prayer. It was sincerely a very nice thing. I went to God in prayer and I said, Lord, this is what these sincere people are saying on account of what you did through our lives. And I would repeat for you the exact words that God used for me. He said, you would die. It didn't make sense for many years, but now I understand exactly what he was saying. The will of God. At the time God helped us to start this ministry, and I say this with all honor to Jesus, I will never forget that time. That was when ministries used to generate revenue principally from the media ministry. Then internet was not really the way it is now. So you package your CDs, package cassettes, and then it will be a major stream of income. I remember the Lord speaking to me, and he said you will not sell any media material that you would put your raw audios not videos just audios online and that my angel will take it to the nations it didn't make sense but glory be to god the foolishness of discerning the will of god i told you that the will of god does not make sense in many regards as at the time his word comes but if you can obey Everybody say prayer. Mark chapter 1 from verse 21 to 35. Listen carefully to what I'm about to say now. Mark chapter 1 from verse 21. The Bible says, and they, they went into Capernaum, Jesus now and his people, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. Watch his life. We're examining the life of Jesus. The Bible says they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. So the word himself and then the Bible says he taught with authority. Next verse. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out, uh -huh, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us before our time we know that you are the holy one of god uh-huh verse 25 and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace 
come out of him so we see that jesus touched the world with power we saw jesus ministering deliverance now 26 it says when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him 27 and they were all amazed everybody say influence they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they obey him next verse and immediately what happened his fame spread abroad but the bible is about to show us what he did that made all of he started with all of the marvelous results next verse 29 and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered the house of simon and andrews and james with james and john uh-huh 30 and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her what did he do and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them this was a celebrity already doing well the bible says when it was evening look at the schedule of jesus from the temple to heal this i'm sure they went to have some time of rest and he still ministered healing and then by evening he already had a crusade when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased and possessed with devils next verse and the entire city were gathered together at the door uh-huh and he healed all that were sick of diverse diseases he casted out the devils he suffered not that they do not speak uh-huh and in the morning watch this wow so this was the secret study the schedule in the morning you are preaching and doing all of this later on even when you go to rest everybody is coming at you the reason for his power was that everywhere he went and everything he was doing was consistent with the will of God now the Bible says in all of his schedules the Bible does not tell us what he does in the morning now we have the privilege to know how his mornings are like he showed us afternoon and showed us night now he says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and the one who had miracles the one who had powerful preaching the one who could heal the sick at will the one who everybody was talking about went to a solitary place to pray brothers and sisters in the presence of this kind of result what do you think he was asking lord power to heal lord power to cast out devils lord revelation uh -uh. if it be thy will reveal your will the secret behind the exploits that everybody is talking about is because i know your will and i understand your program part time he says i do not do anything by myself as i hear i judge so jesus would go in the morning thank you father even though i have come to represent you but i pray that you reveal to me your will and the father reveals to him the will that today this and that and that is what will happen when you find the sick heal them there it is possible that they are going to bring a temptation for you they will bring a woman and caught in the middle of adultery and they are going to talk to you be silent and allow patience to make deception reveal itself and then when they bring such a woman jesus sits down and he's writing and then he lifts up his head and say he who does not have sin cast the first stone and the bible said they were convicted from the oldest to the youngest what kind of grace is that prayer most of you do not know what you are missing out when you get up and start your day without praying is 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 pride to get up and just start your day the one who made the day you will not find out how he designed all of this to be the one who made the day you are not asking him lord what is in it today there are many people god gave them the ministry but they never inquire of god on what to do they go around feeling what makes ministry work now and they say do this do that and they say fine they go and try it 
and it does not work and they are frustrated because they have not stayed with him to hear can i tell you i impart upon you by the spirit of god the grace for the secret place i impart upon you by the spirit of god somebody is receiving this grace the grace to stay with god and only move when you understand his will hallelujah i will never forget years ago i was supposed to go for a meeting in kaduna I was already taking my bath and I was happy. In fact, they really had started the meeting, but they would give me a two hour gap. And so I was taking my bath because it would take about an hour to get to Kaduna then from Zaria. And while I was taking my bath, the Holy Spirit spoke to me expressly. He said, do not go for that meeting. Not because there was anything wrong with the meeting. Very sincere people. Let someone stand for you. Ah, I felt sad because these were people I loved sincerely. I was going for that meeting to encourage the people they love Jesus with all their heart. I said, how do I tell these people now? They had put posters, they had done the little, and it was not like they had much. I had to call two of my people in Kaduna and say, please, go for this meeting and go and stand for me. When I called the people, they thought I was already around. Apostle, are you around? I said, well, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know how I'm going to tell you this, but um, I may not be able to come God has restrained me from coming. What happened? Do we see now? We, we see that God. Mm -mm, mm -mm. For every time you hear God and walk in the will of God, there is a fearful blessing at the other side of your obedience. In fact, sometimes that can literally open the next chapter of your life and your destiny. Listen, you must obtain grace from God to pray. Pray in the night, pray in the morning. You are a man of God. Don't say this is how they are doing it. Go to God and pray. There are many things that are wonderful. I have lovely friends in ministry in this nation and across the globe. And some of them, I even share with them by the privilege of God's grace, ideas to be effective in some of the things that they do. But I will never find myself in anything personally and corporately that has not been commanded by God. Do you know why? I learned this from God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. He said, and this is, I'm saying it because he shared the story, that years ago they were in Ghana, and you know, they were in their season of expansion and all of that, and they went to Ghana, and they found out they were struggling in the ministry. Even though the mandate was speaking globally and everywhere God was prospering the work, but particularly in Ghana, it seemed like there was a resistance. And he went back to God in prayer and God said, I have not commanded it. According to him, he said he, he insisted immediately that they should close that church. Walk circumspectly as wise, not as unwise. How do you walk as wise when you walk knowing the will of God concerning what you are doing? Hallelujah. Everything good is not necessarily godly. If you follow things just because they are good, you will get into many troubles. Satan uses both good and evil to destroy. It is not only evil he uses to destroy. You have to know this and understand this. Now, the fourth key I will give you. Number one, I told you, is surrender. You must be willing to enthrone the will of God above your will. Number two, the ministry of the word. Number three, praying in the spirit. Are you ready for number four? If you really want to discern the will of God, the fourth key is patience. Patience. Hebrews 10, 36 patience hebrews 10 36 please read with me everybody one to read for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of god ye might receive the promise so patience will reveal the will of god for you and then when you find that will and do it you will now obtain the promise can i tell you it is in this area of patience that I submit to you that Satan has cheated many believers because there is a narrative we have been given in the body of Christ that the moment it is God, he will speak expressly. 
Hmm. Go and ask anybody who has done anything worth the while for God. Go and ask Abraham how long he waited for the will of God to manifest. This is, I, I need to bring us into this understanding because most people do not understand what the Bible calls the patience of faith. Are you learning? Patience. In, in Hebrews 6 and verse 15, Hebrews 6 and verse 15 it says and so after he the he being Abraham had patiently endured everybody say patiently endured one more time say patiently endured after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise he had patiently endured he obtained the promise there are many reasons why sometimes in the life of the believer it may take a very long time for the will of God to be revealed to you and I'm going to tell you this I will teach you why so that you will understand because many of you some of you are in this season right now it is a very difficult thing to live in the silence of God very difficult but the glory that follows his season of silence is, is the glory that excels. Is someone hearing me now? Many times people send me text messages and if I have the privilege of meeting a few people, they'll say, Apostle, I've been praying and asking God, should I stay in Abuja? Should I travel to another place? I've been asking God, should I quit my job and do ministry? And it looks like he's not saying anything. I have the heart to obey I study my Bible some of them have gone for dry fasting some of them went maybe to you know uh, prayer places prayer mountains and all of that and took out time to stretch and at the end of it they live disappointed and they are wondering what is all this now is it that God cannot speak every time God is silent Beware of the voice you hear. Every time God is silent, beware of the voice you hear. Because when your desperation to hear and receive the will of God gets to the roof, Satan will come and cash in on that moment and appear as an angel of light. Satan can even use, I wish I had time, I would have shown you an encounter between a young prophet and an old prophet in the Bible. Have you read that story? that God gave a young prophet direction clearly you go and do this and face your front return back don't turn to the left and to the right and an old prophet called him let me tell you this I respect the fathers of faith and I respect you know my honor for the body of Christ I am a strong advocate of honor but can I tell you when it has to do with the mysteries of this life and destiny sometimes you need to be careful experience can destroy experience is powerful but experience is only powerful if it is vetted by the wisdom of God there are many people in the name of experience they have been derailed away from the path of destiny experience is powerful but it must be guarded are we together if experience is powerful how does God do new things because when God is doing a new thing there are new things that have never been experienced before don't get me wrong we must place value on experience and the wisdom of those who have gone ahead of us but you must be careful to not idolize that wisdom as the standard because God is still doing new things there are many things sincere people will tell you that is inconsistent with God's program for your life it does not mean they are wrong they are just being very sincere the old prophet caused the young prophet to make a decision that ended up destroying him let me tell you sincerely as a man of God and with all due respect to the body of Christ if I were to listen to and do everything I've been told by everyone my life would have been in shambles by now 
not because I'm, a, I'm maybe you know I, I'm doing something bad but simply the misdirections that have come from sincere people you must obtain grace you must obtain stamina from God to be insistent on his will there are times that haven't done all all you need to do is sit down until his word comes let me tell you how the word of God comes you read your Bible in the fifth day of the fifth month the word of the Lord came that means before it arrived it was not there this is where the stamina and the maturity of a believer is tested your ability to remain in the last place of his instruction and stay there even when God does not make sense Many times when I was in Zaria, sincere people would tell me, Apostle, this kind of anointing you have, there are so many things you can do. Do this, do that, and sometimes I laugh. Sincerely, I even take notes sometimes and I go back and ponder on it. But every time I'm about to consider it, to, that, that, do not play with that peace factor in your heart. If that peace factor in your heart is not there, be careful. It is not there for nothing. I assure you, it is a potent check of the spirit. Are we together? A gentleman traveled to a particular nation because someone invited him to be an assistant pastor. He didn't pray. He didn't hear anything. It was a joy to him. And you know the way the devil works this thing one two he got visa and he was so happy he used that as a confirmation you will read in the book of Revelation that Jezebel also gives favor Jezebel can give favor can make something that God is taking you slowly but Satan can bring it sharp sharp and you say I know it I knew that this was and you step into something that destroys you everybody say the patience of faith one more time say the patience of faith look up please now I'm, it's because I've said it before that's why I have the liberty to say it. for many years many years and I'm just saying this to inspire you for many years God would not allow me buy a car I felt that I needed it in ministry because the burden of mobility and movement and it was not that the resources were not there I will never forget one time when I went to a car stand I had again talked about the money I was going to pay for it when the Holy Spirit spoke to me the people in the car stand insulted me and they said you don't have money and you came here you know bragging and all of that and I just went how do I tell them God prohibited me are we together there are lots of witnesses in this place for many years as koinonia was ongoing it was a bike that I was using it was not a product of lack there were many gifts of cars that people would bring for me and I would say no the Holy Spirit to say no pray for them and give them back okay God so what is the name of what you are doing with me I, I really mean it I'm just using that as to teach you something how can I be going for a miracle service winning souls casting out devils doing all of that I go for an external ministration. There's a convoy carrying me. I return back home and I'm climbing a bike. I, I remember one time the protocol department, they, I think a woman donated a car or something and they came to pick me. I said, whose car is this? I rebuked them. I said, don't you ever inconvenience anybody. They are not here to come and drive me. They're here to, they, they came to listen to the word of God. Eventually, one of our, our dear ones started using his car you know to move me around and I was saying Lord what is the meaning of this I mean even if it's for responsibility's sake patience 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 can I tell you don't hurry seasons you will miss the season you are rushing out of now you will miss the season you are rushing out of I remember the day I was preparing I think it was a koinonia service a miracle service I do not know when the protocol came to knock my door they know that once I lock myself like that you don't disturb me and 
they knocked the door and i said who is that I said please we have a message for you from who please leave me alone i'm preparing for the service sir a woman said the lord instructed her to bring a car to bring for you i said from where so 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 please this is this and finally that peace that for many years my heart just went down i said lord is this car for me or is it for someone else and the lord said no you'll take it that was the first time god allowed me listen carefully i'm teaching you this so that you will learn you there are many testimonies we can share but there are two reasons why i don't share testimonies because number one most people are not prepared to listen number two some of these my precious social media people um, who promote my messages their interest is they caption nonsense and let me use this as a word of caution I love all those I know that God has used my teachings to bless many people and I'm very happy proposals have come withdraw all your teachings from all these people I said mm -mm. if God is blessing them with it and they are blessing the nation so be it my only concern is make sure that you caption things and present the message in a balanced way that bless people don't be so obsessed to drive traffic that you don't care whether you misrepresent what we are saying so let that be a word if you know anyone who is part of these guys with love don't go and abuse anybody but with love tell them more than just generating income from this make sure that the message you are presenting is edifying not destroying you see the reason why we don't put this because some of them will write nonsense because they know that once they see Joshua Selman there people will just come you must fear God and some of you are here so listen very carefully are we together be disciplined over what you are doing if it's for the kingdom you can you can eat from the altar while you are serving the altar diligently but by the time your desire for money supersedes your desire to have people blessed you are doing something else not ministry are we together so back to my story do you know I stand by God to tell you I passed that vehicle like that and I did not even look at it for once it was when we were done with the miracle service I returned back home after counseling very late in fact already into the morning that was when I went and I opened it it was a Sienna and I said God so this is it I was happy no 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 I wasn't I, I was happy I was just saying so this is how you walk so what was the whole goal and among the many things God told me was that I put you through this sacrifice so that you will mentor young people to teach them that success is not just in getting things I constrain you to help people know that the spiritual content within you that you can excel even without fighting for some of these things do you know let me tell you this from that day till forever what God has done by reason of that sacrifice to wait I will only give God the glory here on earth and even afterwards are we together be careful when impatience begins to destroy your life the all-wise God knows how to direct your life part time per season for some of you you will be surprised you have a good certificate you have everything and for five six years there's no job and everybody is around you who has the power to give you the job they will even make promises sometimes it's not an attack let me wrap up this teaching by teaching you how to interpret the silence of God I pray that God has spoken to someone tonight it is true that there are times God can be silent as far as revealing his will over your life and destiny is concerned I was led of the Spirit to teach you this because I believe that there are many people who are in the season of the silence of God there is something called the season of the silence of God you pray you fast you do everything and it looks like you are not hearing him let me tell you what that means every time God is silent it means three things number one it means he is working on you 
that is the first thing every time god is silent and he withholds revealing his will to you it can mean number one that you as the vessel that will be used to do his will there is a work that he's doing in you and revealing his will to you will be a waste in that state and so his silence means that you can you should continue the training of the building until he makes you the vessel that is able to do that will you want him to reveal please listen very carefully god is speaking to someone right now god why have you been silent on me my family my destiny every time god is silent number one discern that his silence is a message that i am making the vessel who i will use to achieve my will look up please god was silent on jesus for 30 years read your bible you don't hear jesus communicating with god as a small child and yet he was god from the time god spoke around his birth you don't hear any discussion again he went to pray he went to learn for 30 years we don't hear the voice of god over jesus's issue again every time god is silent focus on you not him he is doing something in that vessel jesus was in the temple at age 12 because as powerful as jesus is even though he was god incarnate at that state he would not be able to fulfill the will of god he needed to learn he needed to grow luke chapter 2 and verse 52 your bible says in those moments of silence jesus increased in wisdom he increased in stature he increased in favor with god and man don't waste your moments of silence when god is silent rather than lamenting in impatience focus on allowing him build you lord i know that you have not spoken concerning this and that and that it means that there is something the vessel that you want to use for that task has not yet become the version that necessitates the revelation of your will is someone learning tonight L listen what you are learning tonight you are going to use it to help so many people for some of you, this message now, you will call your loved ones and say, Hey, I came for Koinonia, I found the key. I found the key. While you have prayed and submitted your prayer here at Miracle Service, prayer after prayer, vigil after vigil. Most people do not focus on God making them. They just focus on God revealing his will every time god reveals his will there is a version that will fulfill that will and if you have not become that version he will withhold his speakings and focus on your training powerful another example i use jesus let me give you one more <laughs> when joseph had a dream that was the end of it there was nothing else he saw or had again he just had a dream of his destiny the sun, the moon, 11 stars. When Joseph entered the pit, I'm sure he would say, God, give me, explain to me why a righteous man will be inside the pit by my own brothers. Silence. When they were selling him to go to Egypt, silence. But was he ever out of the will of God? Please talk to me. Even in your confusion, God is still leading you. This is a powerful message tonight. As confused as you may think you are, God is still leading you. Let me tell you how God leads. Look at me. I want to teach you something powerful. If God's desire is for you to go this way and enter a door, please watch me. If God's desire is for you to go left and enter the door to your destiny, and in all honesty and sincerity of heart, believing him you move right he will remove the door there and bring it here to make sure you do not miss his will that is how determined god is believe this about god most of you don't know how powerful god is have you read the scripture that says all things work together not for everybody to them that love the lord so anytime you don't understand your life just ask do i love the lord if your love is still in place find rest Trouble only starts 
when the challenges stole away your love then you are in trouble all things interpreting the silence of God every time God is silent number one it means he's walking on the vessel Joseph look at the tragedies that follow Joseph's life from the well Joseph would get up they sold him in prison and he started serving he became the head of the prisoners just when he was about to rest Potiphar's wife came with her own trouble are we together now and then oh dear look at what happened to Joseph that he was in the prison there and he was holding the cloth of Potiphar's wife how could you deny he was holding the cloth of Potiphar's wife how would he ever explain to them next stage it went to the prison and he was there in the prison do you know he had legitimate grounds to be offended how in the world did I get here simply because of the dream God is 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 that is not worth it please carry it and give somebody that's what somebody wants to do here now to say Lord I am tired of this thing beware when God appears to you and say you are highly favored because sometimes what follows that statement is controversy read your Bible he said you are highly favored you thought that immediately after that you will see people who will come together with gifts and say Mary you mean God appeared to you the favor of God can be very controversial and he calls it favor how do you explain that you are pregnant and yet you claim you are a virgin and instead of God to now speak and defend you he now keeps quiet learn how to live in the silence of God my dear people Joseph went to the prison and he stayed there even in his confusion and pain he was in the will of God and one day watch this he saw two people and he interpreted their dreams and he said please when you go to Pharaoh he didn't say tell him to make me king <clears throat> he said all I want is to get out of this place please tell Pharaoh I'm innocent and the man got there guess what happened he forgot him two years if you are Joseph and you come out and become prime minister who is the first person you are going to deal with you will first deal with the wine presser followed by Potiphar's wife when he became king it was unnecessary when when the will of God is manifest in your life there are battles that become unnecessary you have won Are you learning this now so after two years in patience the voice of God was about to come let me tell you even when you enter the season of his voice you will not know you are that close it will be one morning and then the king sent for fair for Joseph just like somebody came for koinonia here tonight you don't know that the, the the voice of his majesty after 10 years after 15 years after 20 years after five years after two months finally his majesty is about to speak sit down let me tell you how god speaks when god is speaking to end your seasons he does not come as a still small voice read your bible Mm -mm. when it has to do with bringing your season to an end he comes in majesty he will do things that will let them it will be impossible to doubt that he's the one that came hallelujah and on that morning Joseph got up in the morning how are you dear prisoners how are you Joseph God bless you ah it's been a long time two years Plus, we don't know how long he stayed in the prison. We know that the two years was from the time the one presser left. So, X number of years plus two years. He didn't know that that morning he would be prime minister. The, gate, the jailer did not know he was going to open the gate for his boss. Hear me. While you are praying and trusting God, 
Lord, if you will only give me a job of 200,000, I will be grateful. The day the voice of God comes to honor you for being patient through the season of silence, somebody will call you and say, I'm leaving Nigeria. I've been looking for someone to head my company. Can you come and do it for me? And you will think it's a lie that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Please sit down. The king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I'm sure his heart was beating when he came to stand because they didn't tell him why they asked him to come out. If a king should send for you from prison, you are either going to go back or you, they will execute you. And I can imagine him shaking and standing before the king. Your majesty. And the king said, well, I slept and I had a dream. And they say you can interpret dreams. He said, well, it is not within my power. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. This is what you saw, Pharaoh. This is what you saw. So what is the solution? Gather 20% of all of this and save for seven years. And when he finished, Pharaoh said, since God revealed it to you, who else in Egypt is able to do this? I am Pharaoh. And it is only in the throne that you will be second to me. You become the administrator right away. Look up. There are many things he would have done when he was in prison. When he was in prison, he probably would have been gathering some money to build his own house and make meaning of his life. Everything he would have done if he were not in the prison came to him in one day. Read your Bible. A wife came in. He didn't need to look for a wife. Potiphera, the wife of the priest, the priest of On, his daughter, they gave him free. They changed his name. They put royal robe. Everything in one day. Can I tell you, while you are waiting, don't be regretting what you would have been doing. It is already in the plan. The compensation is in the plan. Believe me when I tell you this. Shana Malakatosiata. The compensation has already been built. Hear me. I know, oh Hannah, that you've been waiting a long time for a child, but be patient. The child that is coming is not a normal child. He is the one who will anoint all the kings of Israel. So be patient. Hear me. Do you know why patience is powerful? Patience is powerful because it can help you to be able to gather together the kind of compassion you need through your pain so that you will sustain certain results when they come. When certain destiny things come too easy, there is no memory bank of pain. You will be careless over many great things. But when you, you think Joseph had the time to be careless, after spending X plus two years in the prison, the memory of his pain in the prison will not make him take his job lightly. That's why some of us press into this thing of God because we know where he brought us from. Sit down. Let's wrap up. When God is silent, number one, it means he's working on you, the vessel. Number two, when God is silent, what does that mean? It means he is working on other factors needed to help you do his will. Look up, please. The will of God does not only depend on your obedience. The will of God depends on the synergy of many other people and many other factors. And sometimes when God leaves you in his silence, it's because he's at the other end of your destiny, rearranging the people and the conditions that must make you to walk in purpose. Let me show you one scripture very quickly. Luke chapter 1 from verse 39. Is God helping someone tonight? Luke chapter 1 from verse 39. This is the story of Mary and Elizabeth. If Elizabeth had a child before that time, there would be no occasion that would bring two of them together. And Mary arose in those days. The moment, watch this now. The moment Mary finished her interaction with the angels, she found out that her stomach started protruding. She was afraid because no one else could relate with her situation.
but she remembered there was Elizabeth a woman who has also gone through that season and so as soon as she went to meet her do you know that one of the major reasons why Elizabeth was delayed was so that the timing of Jesus and John the Baptist imagine if she gave birth and John did everything roam around and died do you know how frustrating John would have it would have been for John to be in the wilderness all the while Jesus was growing John was also in the wilderness it was the moment he started his ministry that was when Jesus was also ready to be baptized if John were born earlier than that time John would not be able to have the patience to wait until Jesus grows imagine John as an adult and then Jesus will start growing how old will he be when Jesus will be 30 so for that sake Elizabeth had to wait there are times that the silence of God means he's putting other things in place that will need to the bone that will be joined to bone to make sense of your destiny and purpose hallelujah are you hearing what I'm saying now yes. let's finish up 39 uh-huh 40 now and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth verse 41 and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost I thought God was silent so the Holy Ghost could still speak through Elizabeth why didn't he speak for that long I thought Elizabeth had backslidden that she would not hear the voice of God again and the moment she met with Mary the Holy Ghost came again and she began to speak thou art blessed among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb uh-huh next verse and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me are you seeing prophecy who told Elizabeth that this young lady was carrying his Lord her Lord 44 and lo as soon as the voice of my salutation sounded in my ears the babe leaped in womb for joy destiny had connected can I tell you this for some of you the reason why God is delaying you like this is because the person in the blueprint of your destiny to connect you the person just got born again and that's why God is anointing people like us to hurry up with the training of that person so that the person will rise to a position where that destiny connection can happen are you getting what I'm saying now imagine Boaz roaming around and asking I am a responsible man will I not get a good wife to marry whereas something was happening at the back end Ruth and Naomi God was preparing the great-grandmother of Jesus and unknown to the man he would be a great-grandfather of Jesus can I tell you this every time you don't understand God give thanks and know that he's doing something preparing a table fixing things that you will never never need to have any trouble about again in your life for many years in Zaria again we're looking for land for ministry no ministry will stay that long without at least having a property to start building and all of that and we looked around for land we looked around for land I prayed and prayed and fasted I said Lord there has to be land in Zaria here for us every time you call people you anoint them there has to be I mean there should be something I prayed and prayed and but then when I learned this I knew that something was happening and I kept quiet one day one thing led to the other and then I got I, I slept and I had a dream and I saw directly opposite the teaching hospital in Zaria I saw myself standing there and there was an empty land there and the Lord told me this is true that one day this will be the place that you will buy they had done an excavation there to fix the road and so because he was depressed I'm not sure most people could afford buying it and all of that and that was where God kept that land to get that much that size of a land in Zaria is, is, is quite a big 36 plots and right there 
God kept it. I'm sure the cold that was tied will be wondering, what am I doing here? My colleagues are moving around. Why am I being tied here like this? Not knowing that it was being tied there. Even the owner did not have, he said the cold that no man had ridden on. That means when the owner bought it, he just felt something was leading him to tie it. I'm sure the cold to say, who did I offend? I've been here for a long time, not knowing that you have the privilege to be the one to write Jesus, the triumphant entry. But when the time came, Jesus himself said, now that I have come, all things are ready. Go and lose that cold. And if any man asks you, why are you now losing what you tied before? Tell them, the master. For some of you, God tied you because of something great. He stopped you when other people were going forward. He kept you. And now he's about to reveal you like a trophy because all things are ready. Is someone learning? Number three, when God is silent, what does that mean? The third thing that happens when God is silent is that it is possible that he is fighting unseen battles and averting certain dangers that may befall you on your way to executing his will. He is fighting unseen battles and averting certain dangers that the devil is already programming ahead of you while you are up and doing as far as his will is concerned this is very powerful the third reason why god can be silent as far as revealing his will is concerned is that he can be at the other side fighting battles unseen battles look up please when satan tries to stop your destiny and he cannot stop it when he knows that it is sure you are moving the path of destiny the next thing he does is to begin to program all kinds of woes on your path to actualizing destiny God seeing that can suspend that which is his will for your life and then deal with the obstacles you will be waiting for in future and then the moment that is done he will release you to go one scripture matthew chapter 2 and verse 20. the bible says when jesus was born herod was angry the spirit of the antichrist was moving through herod to make sure that they would kill all the children and the angel told um joseph and mary he said run with this child and go and hide him now do you know they hid jesus there and there was no manifestation of angel again or the voice of the spirit silence they just went, remember where they ran to was a temporary place. When do we return back to live our normal lives? Silence. Verse 20 says, the angel now appeared and said, Arise and now take the young child and his mother and go back into the land of Israel. Why? For they are dead which sought the young child's life. Now you can go back. It is over. All those who would have attacked him and frustrated the ministry, all the curses and the yokes that would have been waiting for you while God is suspending the revelation of his will he's making sure that all those things are dealt with when the road is clear he says now you can go the path is clear before you most believers are not matured enough I hope that what you have learned tonight has helped you so that you can give God praise even when it does not make sense and with this understanding you can comfort many others the silence of God is an advantage arise take your business now arise take your family now arise take your child we're about to pray but let me share a true life story that happened to someone I pray for a lot of people and a couple came and met me one time true story and the man was really lamenting and he said he was not able to have a child listen carefully and um, there was a health problem between him and the wife and all of that and I, I comforted him I said we'll pray I know it's not easy I was even going to refer him maybe you'll see I'll recommend a doctor for you to see and all of that and then true story I held their hands to pray for them and suddenly my eyes opened this is a true story if I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. 
as I held their hands, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a strange vision that would teach me a lesson about what I just taught you. In that vision, I just saw the man enter a room with the wife and I saw children, three children, they were running around. And then in the scene changed and all of them entered a car and they were driving and going somewhere. And then a truck or something like that, I can't really remember, came and just smashed everything and all the children died. That was what I saw in my vision. I mean it, I stand by God to tell you this. All the children died and I saw them wailing and wailing. And I came back to myself. And I said, you say you don't have children or you lost children. They said, no, we've never had children. I said, give thanks. You don't know what God was stopping. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? It, see, when you walk with God, bah, when God says give thanks, just give thanks. You don't know the battles. Some of you here, respectfully speaking, not to get you emotional. Some of you have, you have prayed for God to open some doors. And the moment the door opened, the trouble that came with that door, it was almost not worth it again. And God is saying, I don't want that to happen to you again. Allow me deal with the battles that the devil has programmed. Then it will be a triumphant entry for you. Is someone understanding what I'm teaching now? This is very, very powerful. Very powerful. If you do not understand this side of God, you will never be able to give thanks even when you don't understand him. If God did not train Moses for the extra 30 years and simply because of the pressure to make sure prophecy comes to pass and he pushed Moses prematurely like that, he may have brought them out of Egypt, but they would all die. Even with all the training, it was only Joshua and Caleb in that generation that entered the promised land. So you would wonder what was the hurry now for? Did you read the story of the Shunam, of the, um, of the that was a Shunammite woman, right? The one who had a child who later died. Remember, there was a time that the prophet would be passing and she would see him and say, please, let me honor you. I discern you're a man of God. One time he said, okay, because every time you honor a grace, you provoke something from that grace to bless you. He said, what do I do for you? I have influence. Should I speak in the gov uh, to the government? He said, no, I live among my own people. Do you have a child? No. According to the time of life, you will have a child. I remember the day, or I can imagine the day they were dancing with the child, wondering, join us, sing hallelujah, not knowing that a few moments after that, the child was going to die. And the child died. They brought Gehazi. His spirit didn't allow the anointing work. He came with the rod and nothing happened because it's not just in the rod. It, your heart is the battery that powers that rod. If your heart condition is corrupt, you can hold a real rod and it will not wake anybody. And the prophet had to come himself. He was teaching us a lesson there that when God gives you breakthrough, he takes responsibility for maintaining it. Can I tell you this? Look up. Now I want to tell you this as we wrap up. Every time through ignorance you indict the integrity of God, he will let you have your way. But you will be ready for the consequences of going out of his program. Let me repeat. Every time you insist and you put pressure on God and you say, Lord, I don't understand this, your thing. I have a will. You gave me a will. I choose to do things my way. God will honor you the same way a sinner can stand and say, I don't care. Carry your Calvary there and go. I didn't ask you to die for me. God will honor them to live their lives. But at the end of it, when they die, for sure, they are going to hell. It is dangerous to wrestle with God. It is possible to wrestle with God and you will be the winner. I hope you know that. It is possible to wrestle with God and you will be the one who wins. But let me tell you this, every time your will defeats the will of God, start being afraid for yourself. It will take mercy to redeem you. Tonight's teaching is very serious. It will take mercy to redeem you when you get out of the will of God. There are stories upon stories I can tell you 
of people who stubbornly push through God I don't care you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that are Hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. We're going to pray. There was a time I was given an invitation to go to a particular nation. I would not mention the name. And my people already know the moment my spirit begins to fight something, they just leave me alone quietly. Because once my spirit starts fighting something, I know that there is something that is wrong. I may not fully understand. We started planning for that meeting and the people were very happy. I was excited to go to that land. It will be my first time there. And I perceived the people to be very serious. But we started the planning to go and stamp my visa. My visa was in another embassy. There was a delay. Very silly things were causing. It was many things were affecting the preparation. At a point I told them, stop. Something is wrong. I know my work with God. Something is wrong. Eventually, I asked them to tell the people that I'm sorry I may not be able to make it. True story. They were very sad now i love them even today perhaps they are following but i said i may not i'm not going to be able to honor the meeting i'm sorry but they got really sad they got sad and i said what is wrong if you've spent some money maybe bookings don't worry let me just have your bills i will refund you in full later on i would discover that when it was announced that i was coming to that nation true story people from neighboring nations started saying we're coming to and when they saw the volume of people and the kinds of people they sat together and said look we're not going to waste this opportunity they now came up with a program where people will pay a particular amount and then they will have a private session with me they gave them an assurance that if they pay that money they will give them and the people said if it's apostle no problem how much is it some people were going to pay for themselves and their whole families and while i was here my spirit i'm teaching you how to walk in the will of god if your prayer life is dead you will fall into many traps cheaply not every open door is god's door or not every open door is a door you should enter at that time sometimes it may be the door you will eventually enter It was a difficult thing later on in anger they did not tell the people i was not coming again because they didn't want to be disappointed and so the meeting would start crowds of people came and they brought somebody with all due respect to the body of christ they carried one prophet from a nation and took somewhere and one young boy that boy made a caricature of the gospel he did so many and it was a land that is very conservative that young boy did a lot of nonsense things, was trying to it turn, I think I was hearing he was turning water. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't speak against, I, I, be, I believe in miracles, but I know what is not a miracle. Hallelujah. A lot of nonsense. And imagine respectable people who flew in. You can imagine a man of status with his children who flew in. People were fasting and praying to encounter God. Here comes a young boy ill prepared for ministry who just came and wasted their time. People were just kissing and they got up and walked away. They said, no wonder apostle did not come. And I said, Lord, you see how you protect us and sometimes we don't know that it is your love. Many restraints is the love and the mercy of God so that certain battles will be fought. Are we together? When Koinonia started, after about two, three years or thereabout, I started having an inspiration, should I come to Abuja to come and set up Koinonia? I was in this same city having a retreat. And I saw a plane 
the plane was written E and I. The plane left Zaria and it was coming to Abuja. The moment it was about to land Abuja, it crashed and everybody within the plane died. I knew what God was saying. That don't you dare do anything that is outside of my timing. It was still in his plan that we'll be here. But timing is as important as the word. The word go and the word go now are not the same. The word go and the word go later are not the same. So just because God tells you you are going to go left, you need to ask him now that I know where I'm going, when am I going? When am I going? Because if you miss one day, or if you exceed with one day, it can corrupt the entire process of the journey. Has God spoken to someone tonight? There are only two prayer points we are going to pray tonight within the time that we have. The prayer, first prayer is, Oh God, where I am already at the edge of making a fatal disaster over my life, I obtain grace for a U-turn this night. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying, talk to the Lord. Lord, where I have missed out on your will for my life, I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying, where I have feared of sincerely, I thought you were the one telling me to do the business. I thought you told me to start ministry. Now I realize you are not the one. I'm not ashamed to cry. Show me mercy. Because he said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. When you are carrying what is killing you, vet and be sure that it is God's burden you are carrying. don't be tired please pray this is about your destiny hallelujah prayer point number two lord grant me the grace and the staying power that all the days of my appointed time i will wait until your voice comes to lead me destroy the spirit of impatience listen especially this our generation there is pressure to prove a point i am now a millionaire ministry is now working i now have thirty thousand members be careful for 10 years you may be pastoring 10 people those 10 people are not yet your members they are the leaders you are raising afterwards god will now bring members and you will find out that you are leading a global ministry it is this lack of understanding the will of God and the timing of God that has brought many people to rub their hands in all kinds of satanic things. You are going to pray, Lord, the grace to stay. The grace to stay in the area and the place of your will. No matter the sun, no matter the rain, the stamina to insist to see that your will comes to pass in my life. Someone pray, lift your voice and pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray from the depth of your heart. hallelujah first john 5 14 and 15. first john 5 14 and 15 please media help us first john 5 14 and 16. this will be our memory verse for tonight 
use it to pray throughout this week let's read it together and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him your confidence is that once you are in the will of God find rest once you are in the will of God find rest for some of you you are about to quit your job right now and God is saying that job if you are can be patient three more months just when your promotion is on its way coming don't let the devil cheat you because the salary is not a reflection don't make the mistake of Hagar when they banish Hagar Hagar went away in anger when God met her he said return back to your mistress your mistress listen please use this week to pray pray in the spirit write the various aspects of your life out and say father with clarity reveal your will don't mind people who say it doesn't matter you have a brain be careful brain has landed many people in trouble it is better to be foolish and to wait when his word comes influence comes grace comes the man you are seeing today standing before you that by the privilege of God's grace you celebrate is a product of the honor that comes in standing with the will of God I pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God for all of you who are asking Lord direct me let me know your counsel for the next chapter of my life receive precision of understanding of his will in Jesus name some of you he will come to you in dreams this night some in visions this night some he will give you a scripture this night some he will reveal to your spirit this night but by all means may my God reveal to you by all means may my God reveal to you number two I want to pray specially for all those who have been in the waiting room of destiny waiting on the word of the Lord I want to pray for you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be returned unto you can i tell you this hear me it does not take god anything to compress the blessings of your 20 years of your 10 years of your five years and bring it in a moment therefore i prophesy to you especially for those who have been waiting on the word of the lord in the name of jesus with his word let there be restoration with his word let there be multiplication with his word let there be increase in the name of jesus hear me for some of you as the word of god is coming in this season it will come with a grace to pursue it will come with a grace to overtake and by all means to recover all i say it again it will come with a grace to pursue it will come with a grace to overtake hear me some of you may have been burying 5 10 15 years it's not one child that will come four children at once will come to compensate for the time of waiting in the name of jesus christ joseph do not fear your compensation is already in the palace joseph do not see your season of the prison as a waste your compensation if you insist to come out of the prison God will open the door but you will return back to Potiphar's house but if you wait for his timing 
you will never need to go to Potiphar's house again. From the prison, you are going to the throne. May the grace that enthrones, let that grace rest upon you. May the grace that lifts, let that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let me encourage you. Please, I plead with every one of you watching and listening. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, listen to this message again. Please, if you love Jesus and you honor me as your man of God, go and listen to this. Go to Koinonia Global. Some of you this night, go and settle down again. Believe me when I tell you, many of you did not hear what I said. Go back and listen with your heart open and you will truly hear what the Lord told you through this message. Are we together? Everybody go and settle down and listen. You will hear a word for your business. You will hear a word for your health, for every aspect of your life. Apostle, I need Jesus. I can't hear this kind of message. The Bible says it is the will of God that all men be saved. I have been running away from the will of God. I want to make it right now. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I am tired of rigmaroling my life. I really want to be serious with Jesus. Wherever you are, please, I want you to run and come and stand here right now. Give me the honor of praying for you tonight. If you are coming, make your way very boldly. Don't wait for someone to be the first. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Run to Jesus. Come. Run to Jesus. It's time to walk in his will. Whether you are young or old, rich or poor, that's not what I'm asking you. Come and stand here. It's time to make it right. To be in the will of God. Your immunity is in the will of God. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Don't let your friends stop you. Come to Jesus. Don't mind those looking at you. Come to Jesus. I can assure you, you are in the will of God. The devil will not ask you to come and stand here. Come to Jesus. If you are still coming, please come quickly because I'm about to pray. This is the will of God that all men be saved. The word of God reveals to us that he's able to save to the uttermost. So if you are coming responding to salvation, I assure you, you are in the will of God come remember what i taught you about refusing the will of god you have the power to refuse but with every refusal there are consequences thank you jesus now for all of you who are in front thank you very much you have responded to the word of god that malleability of heart remember that the first key to discerning the will of god is a heart that is ready to surrender you are here because you believe in him young and old i salute you and i thank you for the courage to make this decision all who are following from your home all of the overflows please lift your right hand to heaven as a sign of surrender and say this after me convincingly say lord jesus if you're joining them please join quickly if you join them at the end you were not saved the counselors will have to lead you to Christ so please join them very quickly say Lord Jesus tonight I am ready to be in your will it is your will for me to be saved therefore I ask you to forgive my sins to cleanse me from all unrighteousness I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart and into my life as my Savior as my Lord and as my King the power of sin of Satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i know thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media